Hello, this is Zach from Engadget, and what we have here is the new 15-inch MacBook Pro from Apple with the Retina display. And so officially, this is the Apple MacBook Pro with Retina display. Uh, Apple decided to, to keep the naming in line with its other Pro series of computer, even though there are some significant differences here from the, uh, the traditional MacBook Pro line. And so we have a, a similar design overall. Same aluminum finish, which means that it's also prone to scratching, just like the previous generation MacBook Pros. And so you're going to want to put a, a case on the bottom and, and top if you really want to protect your computer from scratching. We've had this for a, a couple days now and haven't had any, any significant scratches yet, but we've been very, very careful with it. If you're a pro traveling around with this, you're probably going to get it nicked up quite a bit. Uh, overall design, very similar uh, from the front to the previous generation MacBook Pro. The major difference here, besides the thickness, which I'll talk about in a moment, is the Retina display. And so this is a 2880 by 1800 pixel display. Uh, it is 15.4 inches, just like the previous MacBook Pro, but that resolution has been stepped up significantly. And so we can't actually select 2880 by 1800 pixels in the settings here. And I'll go over to the display settings to show you here. Um, you can either do the best for retina display or you can scale it. And so you can scale all the way up to more space as Apple is calling it and that gives us a resolution of 1920 by 1200. So we can go ahead there. You have quite a bit more real estate to work with on the desktop although it's clearly not 2800 or 2880 by 1800 pixels. Um, it is scaled. So if you want to go back to the retina uh, the best setting for retina viewing, that's the setting that you want, and that is the default. And so we no longer have specific resolutions to choose from. Uh, Apple has simplified that a bit, even though this is definitely a pro model. And so we can go all the way up to 1024 by 640. If we want to scale that high, uh, you'll probably never be using it at this setting, however. So we're just going to go back to the retina setting for the purposes of this video here. Uh, you can select that either in scaled or in the best for retina display um, checkbox right here. So I'll go ahead and close that off. So Apple just announced this a couple days ago, which means that we don't have any third-party apps that are optimized for the retina display yet. Um, so far, Safari looks fine, but when you go down uh, to any website, including Engadget, oh, images do not appear uh, at retina resolution. They are noticeably pixelated they are not as sharp as they would be otherwise. If you go to Apple's website, however, Apple has optimized their site for the retina display, and so you'll notice when it first loads the page, it'll be a little bit unsharp, and then it does sharpen up right away. And so this is, we're looking at the MacBook Pro with retina display from this MacBook Pro with retina display, and the zebras there are incredibly sharp. You probably can't see it on the video, but very, very sharp indeed. And so, uh, back to the physical aesthetics, we have the same aluminum construction, and then we have a glossy display. And so there's no option for a matte display, but the glossy uh, effect has been reduced, and so it's not as quite as reflective as the previous generation MacBook Pros, just like the MacBook Airs that we've had uh, since last year. And so definitely re reduction in glare. Uh, there is still a little bit of glare, and so if you have some, some lighting behind you, uh, if you're sitting in an airport with uh, the sun in front of a window, um, if you're using it outside, you're going to have a little bit of reflection, but definitely a noticeable improvement over the previous generation. Unfortunately, there is no matte option, though. So what you see is what you get right here. So this is a 15.4-inch display, and with that retina resolution, that gives us a pixel density of 220 pixels per inch. And so comparing that to the iPad, which is 264 pixels per inch, and the iPhone 4S, which is 326, it's obviously not quite as dense as those devices, but sitting at a distance that you would normally use a laptop, which would be about from here, uh, you can definitely not make out individual pixels. If you get right up against the screen, then you can see pixels, but using it at a normal distance, it, you have a very clear image, no individual pixels in sight. Now this is the base configuration that we have here. It's powered by a Ivy Bridge chipset, 2.3 gigahertz quad-core Intel Core i7. 
And so there's a couple other options. You can either purchase a 2.6 gigahertz Core i7 or 2.7 gigahertz. And this base model also offers turbo boost up to 3.3 gigahertz if you need that, that extra performance. Uh, the base model includes 8 gigabytes of RAM. And the RAM is soldered to the, to the uh, logic board. And so you won't be swapping in additional RAM later. You can get up to 16 gigs, but you need to purchase that with the notebook. And so you have to opt for that uh, before you check out. If you want 16 gigs, now is the time to get it. We also have a 256 gigabyte SSD in here, also soldered to the logic board. And so if you need more storage, that's something that you're going to need to buy uh, when you purchase the computer. You can either get 256, 512 gigabytes, or 768 gigabytes. Uh, the 512 option comes with the, the higher configuration. We do have uh, Thunderbolt, dual Thunderbolt ports right here on the left side of the computer. As you can see right down here, one and two and so you can connect devices through there we also have dual USB 3.0 ports and so there's one on the left side and then one on the other side while I'm over here I'm going to go over the ports a little bit though we have a new MagSafe 2 connector so because of the thickness of the computer it's just 0.71 inches thick the previous MagSafe adapter could not, uh, could not fit um, in this thin of a profile. And so Apple replaced the MagSafe adapter with the MagSafe 2. And so very similar in principle, but in execution it's quite a bit different. It's wider and thinner, which means that if you had a MagSafe adapter, you're going to have to buy a $10 connector from Apple that will fit your, your previous MagSafe adapter into the MacBook Pro. And that also applies to Thunderbolt displays or uh, any of Apple's previous cinema displays that have the built-in power connector. They won't have the MagSafe 2. And so we also have a headphone port over there. Up here, I'll tilt the computer a little bit towards the camera so that you can see. We have two speakers. And so there are stereo speakers right here, left and right, just like on the previous generation MacBook Pro. Uh, performance is quite a bit better, though. Uh, you can fill a small room with the sound from these speakers. Although professionals will probably be using these with headphones, especially while editing video. If you do need to make a presentation, a slideshow presentation, or a video for clients, that type of thing, uh, these speakers should definitely suffice. On the graphics front, we have uh, integrated Intel HD Graphics 4000, and then there is also Kepler-based uh, discrete NVIDIA GeForce GT 650M graphics. And so if you're a gamer, you'll be quite happy with this system. Uh, we, we were doing a little bit of gaming during our review, and uh, no issues at all. The only issue that we did see is that the bottom of the device can tend to warm up quite a bit. And so if you are a gamer, uh, if you're doing quite a bit of video editing, just be prepared for, uh, for a warm uh, bottom case. It's not ideal, obviously, but if you're doing just basic web, uh, web use, um, email, even a little bit of Photoshop, it shouldn't be an issue. We also have a new FaceTime camera. This is 720p, um, up from the previous generation of MacBook Pros. So we did do a little bit of FaceTime earlier, and it, it looks uh, looks like a noticeable improvement. We didn't get 700, 720p um, because we were chatting with someone that was on a Wi-Fi network um, with limited bandwidth, but it did look definitely noticeably uh, improved. And then you can also, of course, test it out by doing uh, some photo booth shooting right here on the camera. And so, no objections there. It's great to have 720p uh, for the FaceTime camera if you do do any video chatting with your MacBook Pro. And so, from a, a weight perspective, this is 4.46 pounds. And so, it's noticeably heavier than we were expecting. Uh, this is definitely not the 15-inch MacBook Air that may have been rumored. This is definitely a pro model. It's about a pound lighter than the, the previous generation MacBook Pro. It's also a pound and a half heavier than the MacBook Air. And so you will um, definitely notice that you're lugging this around. Um, for long trips, uh, the MacBook Air is, is probably your best bet, but definitely a noticeable improvement over the MacBook Pro. Also very thin construction. It's 0.71 inches thick. Uh, all the way around. So it's not a tapered design like the MacBook Air. It's consistent from the front to the back, 0.71 inches. So uh, very thin. Um, the display is also very thin as well. 
And so when closing this, it is even closed, it's thinner than just the bottom portion of the previous generation MacBook Air. Now we also have 802.11a, b, g, and n Wi-Fi on board. There's no 802.11ac, um, so Apple is not future-proofing this MacBook Pro. If you do want fast connectivity, you're going to need to use a Thunderbolt to Ethernet to Gigabyte Ethernet adapter. There is no longer a dedicated Ethernet port, and so if you need fast connectivity, you're not going to get it over Wi-Fi, and you are not going to go get it uh, with a built-in Ethernet connector. You're going to have to buy that adapter from Apple. But uh, with th two Thunderbolt ports, you don't have to worry about using up the, uh, the system's entire connectivity um, just to connect to a, a wired network. Another reason Apple was able to achieve such a thin design is because we no longer have the slot-loading super drive that was on the right side of the computer. We have an SD card slot right there, just like on the MacBook Air, but there is definitely no optical drive over here. And so in addition to slimming the device, it also gave Apple more room uh, for some additional battery cells. And so we're able to get, Apple, uh, Apple rated this at seven hours. We were able to get uh, almost eight hours with this, seven hours and 49 minutes uh, during our battery test, which is not too shabby at all. So uh, really no, no concerns on the battery life. Very impressive, uh, especially for a notebook with such a thin design. So this is it. This is the 15-inch MacBook Pro with Retina display. It's available for purchase now, although shipping delays uh, are timed about two to three weeks at this point, although you can pick it up at a store. We were able to get this base model in New York City yesterday without any issue, and so you should be able to pick one up in store if you don't want to wait two or three weeks. But uh, MacBook Pro starting at $21.99.